Hey guys, this is Mr. Adams from Midwood High School, and today we're going to be looking at physical changes and also chemical changes, okay? A nice thing, physical changes or physical properties or physical process, right, all follow the same um, set of rules, okay? So in a physical change or physical process, there will be no change in the identity of the substance, okay? There's going to be no new substances that are going to be created. There's only going to be a change in form, okay? Now, some examples of physical change, physical properties, or physical process would be cutting, crushing, or dissolving, okay? Also, very important, any of the phase change. Any type of phase change, okay, is going to be physical. For example, melting, freezing, boiling, condensation, also with those guys, sublimation and deposition. Now moving on to chemical changes, right? Or chemical properties or the chemical process, right? A chemical process, there is a definite change, okay? In identity, all right? The substance would have a definite change in identity and a new substance or substances will or are, will, are gonna be created, all right? Now, the atoms, in a chemical change, right? They're gonna recombine chemically, okay? To create new products, okay? Now, examples of that would be what? Would be burning, okay? And any of the chemical reactions that we're gonna encounter in the future. There's a bunch of chemical reactions that we're gonna learn, maybe like for around five or six, okay? And examples would be a uh, type of corrosion or rusting, but there's some other chemical reaction that we'll learn later on. But any type of reaction would be chemical, all right? So we're gonna do some experiments in a second. So we'll be back. Guys, we're back, okay? Now here's the deal. Remember this from the last video, the last time we were doing uh, mixtures? This guy right here, we have iron and sulfur. I don't know if you can see it or not, but iron and sulfur are here in this um, watch glass, right? And the thing is, this right here, the mixture, okay, is a physical combination. Reason being the iron is still iron, the sulfur is still sulfur. Each particular one of these guys holds on to its identity, all right? Nothing changes about it. So this is a classic experiment, right? So if I take a magnet and I poke it in here, all right, you guys see the iron on the magnet right here, okay? So each thing still holds on to its identity. Now, if I were to take, all right, some of this iron and sulfur mixture, right, and put in the test tube like this, bam, and heat it up, okay? Let's see what happens. So, got this. I'm gonna put this there for now. Got my trusty heater, all right? And I'm gonna light this up, bam, okay? I'll be back. Okay, so we have our flame, okay? We have our iron sulfur mixture right here. I don't know if you can see that, okay? Now I'm gonna put it in the flame. Okay. I don't know if you can see or not, you see that darker color, that black color in the bottom right there? What's happening now, the iron, and the sulfur are combining, okay, chemically to form a compound. That compound's name is iron sulfide. Now, I'm gonna stop in a second because the thing is, the gas that's coming out of here is gonna be pretty, um, you know, nasty smelling, all right? So I'm not gonna like, heat it up much more than this. But can you see that right there? Iron sulfide is in, um, inside of this guy right here, okay? Now, the other thing is, folks, Turn this off. If I were to crack this um, test tube, right, and then I put the magnet, okay, and see if the iron still can magnetize and be attracted to the magnet, it won't happen because the iron now is combined chemically with the sulfur, all right? So no problem, okay? All righty. Next one. All right, guys. I got some chalk right here, right? So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop in this mortar, bam pestle and I'm gonna crush it up okay now all I'm doing here 
I'm changing the form of the chalk, right? But there's no other chemical type of reaction taking place. The chalk is still chalk, it's just smaller and a higher surface area. So if I took some of this chalk and put it in a watch glass, okay? See that? Okay, and I add some acid to it. Let's see what happens. You guys hear that? Let's see if I can get a better view here. You see that right there? Okay. This is bubbling up right there. Gas is being produced, reaction taking place. All right. Okay, maybe I should put in a test tube, but no problem. There you go. See that? Bam. All right, guys. See right here? I have some magnesium ribbon, right? And if I did this to it, Okay, see that? And this again. Is that chemical or physical? Okay, it's physical, yes. Okay, no problem. So I'm just breaking it apart. I'm just changing the form. Now, let's get a flame. Let's light it up. Okay, flame right here. I'll put it right there. Okay, good, so you guys can see it. I'm take a bit of this magnesium ribbon. Alrighty, I'm gonna poke it in the flame and see what happens. Okay, see that? Okay. <laughs> Definitely a chemical change right there. Um, I have ash that I stomped on just now. Okay, you saw the gas is being produced chemical reaction right there between the magnesium and oxygen to produce magnesium oxide in the ashy form. Okay, bam. Moving on. Here, I have some iodine, right? Some iodine, I'm gonna take some out. Okay, it has this nice dark violet type um, color to it. Okay, dark grayish violet color. I don't know if you can see that or not. There's grains right there, there you go. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put some Okay, in this crucible right here. Okay, put in my trusty crucible. And I have my crucible tongue, my crucible um, triangle right there. Okay, my clay triangle. And I'm gonna place this in here. I have my trusty flame on already. Okay. So I want you to look at it carefully, folks. Can you see that vapor coming out? I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover it right now. Maybe, let me move the flame away. Okay. And you see that vapor coming out right there? Let me cover it. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the cover off in a second, okay? And I'm gonna show you that vapor. Let me bring this a little closer, okay? I think I can turn that flame off now. Okay, bam, see that? Okay, now that's, iodine gas it went from the solid phase right straight into the see that gas phase all right so now i shouldn't be doing this in the fume hood but you know let me step back now ladies and gentlemen if you're going from the solid phase straight to the gas phase right that's a phase change called sublimation all right so iodine tends to sublime when you heat it okay so that's an example of a physical change okay you're not changing iodine i2 is still i2 it's just changing form so that's physical so every time you apply heat to something it doesn't mean automatically you're burning it okay it depends on the situation sometimes if you burn something definitely you create new things but in this case right here we applied the heat it didn't burn it it just caused the solid iodine to change into the gas phase and that's sub sublimation that is a physical process or physical change, okay? All righty, let's do one more. All right, guys, so last one. We got a beaker of water, right? Okay, right here. 
and I have some potassium. Okay. Now later on, we're gonna learn in um when we do the periodic table that potassium is a group one metal. It's called a uh, alkali metal, and so on. And we'll get into the reason why, and so on. Right. But I just want to show you something right now in terms of physical and chemical uh, changes. All right. So I'm gonna open this up. We're gonna grab some, or grab a piece. All right. All right. Okay. And I'm gonna get my trusty watch glass over here. All right. And I'm gonna cut a piece of it, like cut it in half. I don't know if you can see that or not. Okay, see this guy right here? It has a purplish, grayish color to it. Bam, right there, two small pieces right there, okay? Now what I'm gonna do now, all right, cut it in half, that's definitely physical, right? We just changed the form, but we didn't do anything in terms of um, chemical reaction. I'm gonna drop it in the water, okay? So pay attention. Wow, nice. See that? I'm gonna step back right here, okay? Woo, excellent. So that's potassium, folks, reacting with water. Now, based on your analysis, do you think that's physical or do you think that's chemical, all right? That is a chemical reaction, definitely, okay? Now, check this out. I got some red litmus paper right here. I don't know if you can see that. Bam. Red litmus paper. Now, remember, going back to living environment, you guys should have done a lab using litmus paper, right? And you use litmus paper to indicate pHs for you. Now, this is red. I'm going to drop it in here, and we're going to see what color it turns. It's red right now. Can you see that? Bam. All right. Bam. Okay, drop it in. Okay, take it out. Let me see, see that? Bam, it's now blue, right? What caused that? Okay. The red litmus paper turned blue, okay, because new things were produced that will cause the pH to go up, okay? Particularly the hydroxide ion. We didn't do acids and bases yet. We normally do that in chemistry too but that's a definite chemical reaction. You saw the fire um, rapidly jump out right there, okay? You saw that the, the litmus paper turned color, so it's a chemical reaction. So once again, if you can recognize that a new substance was created, okay, you know you have a chemical reaction or a chemical change or a chemical process on your hands, okay? If you don't see anything new created, there's no, there's no um, new substance created, okay? And it's only changing form. That's a called a physical process or a physical change. All right, guys. Take care.